Well, describe what we've got working here. Okay. Uh, I'll start this up here. Basically, what we're looking at is when you're, you're doing tests in the laboratory of uh, mind-matter interaction, the, the hypothesis is that the mind can cause matter to do something directly without any intervention. And so most of the experiments involve looking at something on a computer screen, and it's, it's a valid experiment, but it's not very interesting. So what I did is I created uh, feedback for a, a mind-matter interaction experiment that uses this robot. And what, you're, what the person is asked to do in here is uh, to simply look at the robot and will the robot to reach over, pick up the candy, and drop it in the dish. And when it drops in the dish, then you can, you can use it. You can have the candy if you wish. So what's happening underneath this is that the robot knows about 30 different positions that it can be in. And if you're successful in influencing the physical matter, the target in this case, although the, usually a subject doesn't know about the target, if they're successful, the robot will continually move in the direction towards getting the candy, then picking it up, and then moving over and dropping it. If you're not successful, it'll start backing up. And so if you look at the, uh, the total, well, see, now it's doing very well. Oop, there we go. In that case, when it backed up, back up again, back up. When it backs up, it means that I'm not being successful in the task. So you know you're successful when you get the candy as fast as possible. And how often are your, your students or subjects successful with it? Well, we ran 105 people through this over the course of about a year. And the idea was when the robot is just by itself and, not, and there's nobody here, it takes about 30 seconds to, to randomly just go over, pick it up, and drop it. And after looking at 100 people, in general, we have about one second left. Now, that's, that doesn't mean we're going to create uh, psychically controlled robots, but it does mean that there is some evidence that the, the will impressed into the system makes a robot do what you wish it to do faster. And, and what's the physics of that? How does that work, or do you know? Well, we don't really do have, we don't have good explanations yet as to how something like that can occur, but the best guess at this point comes from quantum mechanics, because one of the central mysteries in quantum mechanics coming directly from the theory is that the nature of observation changes a physical system. And so us as observers, and looking at a system like this, the, the theoretically would be affecting the system. And what we're doing here is empirically testing that hypothesis. And the hypothesis uh, seems to be upheld, that, that our will does affect the system. I'm reading your chapter right now on skeptics and skepticism, and I think you really do a great job at dismantling those guys. But uh, is this a case where the public, which seems to have an appreciation and a general understanding that there are abilities, that, that all of us seem to have some sort of ability, mm -hmm. is way ahead of the scientific community, which is steadfast in its uh, refusal to accept the research? Well, the, the paradox, you're, you're talking about the paradox. The paradox is very wide belief in these phenomena. And by the way, that goes for scientists as well, although they're not ready to admit it yet. Uh, it's the belief against the, the, the theories in science. And so, uh, in a sense, you can say that uh, the, the empirical data that people get, which is our own experience, says that these phenomena are real. It's not diminishing over time. It's about the same as it has always been. The question is, how come our scientific theories aren't good enough yet to be able to describe these in scientific terms? And the answer to that is very simple. It's the same reason why we don't have a very good explanation for consciousness, or until recently for things like why anesthesia works. There are lots of mysteries that science just hasn't caught up to yet. And so eventually, since science is quite good at figuring out these sorts of things, uh, I believe that the, uh, the, the body of, th of scientific theory will expand. It must expand, otherwise the, the whole system is dead. It'll eventually expand and be able to explain things that currently are unexplainable. And the reason that, the, that science does, is not capable of explaining it thus far has to do with scientists themselves, isn't it? I mean, that they don't want to, or...? No, I think, you know, th there's... Just as though uh, there are topics which are politically incorrect, there are topics which are scientifically incorrect. Now, that doesn't mean that things like prejudice don't exist. It's just that through politically incorrectness, we don't talk about it. And in science, the same thing happens. There are some topics which are so hot because they're controversial that scientists have learned that it is damaging to your career if you do talk about it. And this is one, right? Well, yeah, this is one because we don't know what the connection is. We, we have a, a glimmerings of a theoretical connection, but we don't know. And for some bizarre reason, it, actually, it's not so bizarre. 
for an understandable reason, scientists, as well as everyone, are driven by theory. If we understand something theoretically, then it's okay. But in my view, that's really backwards. And it, it, it reflects the two different kinds of approaches in science. One approach says, if I have a good theoretical understanding of something, well, then it's okay, and I can study it, and I can have a career in this, and so on. But science only advances primarily through empiricism, which is the basis of skepticism. It says that somebody comes in with a claim that they can influence this saying, I don't believe it. Well, let's try it. And you don't try it on a single basis. You try it with lots of people over a long period of time. And as I talk about in my book, this kind of thing has been going on for over 40 years, and we know very well that it happens. It's real. It's real. It doesn't mean that we're able to levitate this. We don't see that in the laboratory, but we do see evidence suggesting that the nature of the whole system itself has actually changed in a way that would suggest that the mind is somehow interacting with it. Show us what's your slot machine over here. Uh, well, the slot machine actually was a, a gift. It's not plugged in at the moment, but... Is that used in an experiment? Yeah, we did use this in an experiment. Uh, this was a, a gift by the, uh, the assistant general manager of the Continental Hotel uh, and Casino. And what we, the idea was that we wanted to uh, test, the, uh, test the claim that some people had that they knew which machine to use. You know, you'd wander around and, and pick a machine, and either through precognition or who knows what would, would use a particular machine. So we brought in a, a couple of people, um, students from around here, and they played the machine in the laboratory to see how lucky they were. And we were able, of course, we have the key, so we're able to get in there and, and uh, see what's happening. Then we took the same people to a real casino, to the Continental, in fact, and they played there. And we were, wanted to see whether or not their performance in the lab under controlled conditions with known number of, of quarters being played would translate in, to, into a real-world environment. And as often happens in scientific experiments, we got a very, very good result completely backwards. <laughs> so the people who performed really well in the laboratory were the ones who performed really badly in the actual casino. And what do you, what's the conclusion from that? Well, of course, we don't know because it was, it was a single test. But it, it suggests, at, at minimum, that there may be something interesting going on. Because after all, the, the environment here is very different than the casino. Somebody who can perform well under these quiet conditions, under high control, maybe that's exactly the wrong person that, that, that should go into a casino because they're distracted and they can't perform well. A lot of times I think,